So I thought I'd give a little talk here on a sort of a test test schedule for uh, navigating patterns about how to train algorithms. So a lot of people have misconceptions about algorithms. Algorithms are not agents in the world, like that don't know how they work. Um, all the algorithms used by the major platforms are well known and well understood, actually. Uh, oh no, we don't have the source code. Oh, you need the source code. Like, you can't get an insurance code out and figure out what it is and how it works. Not necessary. Um, it won't help you anyway, even, yeah, it actually won't help you. Uh, I've seen some of these source codes for some of these algorithms. Uh, yeah, bad software engineering. Um, knowing how the algorithm reacts and responds is way more important than actually looking at source code implementation. Uh, it's not a magic thing. It really isn't. Uh, the people who know the algorithm best are not the people that wrote it. All this might sound shocking. Um, for example, the way the Google search engine used to work, like version one, publish in a white paper. Look at something like Hadoop. It's based on the original Google white paper. Um, you know, oh, what's the secret to Nginx published in a white paper, uh, actually called the C10K problem. Um, I can, problems like, <laughs> you know, the whole architecture. Uh, in that case, you have the source code. You can go look at it too. Um, you know, how does Facebook algorithm work? Go look on the forums. The distributed cognition of the people trying to reverse engineer the algorithm is greater than the cognition of the people that wrote the algorithm. They know the algorithm better. For real. It's, it's not hard. Algorithms are based on inputs and outputs, right? So you can use inputs. Look at outputs. And figure out how it works and reverse engineer it. It really doesn't take that much effort. Now, you say, oh, the algorithms are true to billions of people, blah, whatever. Yeah, the information is available and you can see the effects immediately. So, for example, uh, I recently learned that um, there's data sharing between, um, oh, shoot, who was it? It was. YouTube, which may or may not be Google search because YouTube actually has its own search engine. Uh, it's the second largest search engine in the world, by the way. Um, and um, what site was it? It was, it was, it wasn't Clubhouse. It, Clubhouse sells data too. It was, um, shoot. It wasn't Facebook. Facebook buys data though. Um, damn, I don't remember the website, but it was a, it was a comparatively, so it wasn't LinkedIn, but it was something like LinkedIn. And I know they share data because I did it. I, I grabbed something and then all of a sudden it started showing up in one of my um, YouTube feeds. And I went, what? And it was instant. I was like, oh, all right. Well, they've got instant data share agreement. It's not that hard to see what the algorithm is doing. Um, look, you have to be really organized, have a really good memory, like I do, um, to, to catch these things. But the, it, it's not like with a little data analysis, you can't catch them. So my buddy, years, years ago, he owned a, one of the first ISPs actually in that, um, all kinds of groundbreaking stuff. He, he should have made a billion dollars, but he's his own worst enemy, so he didn't. Um, he used to keep a different email address for every site he gave an email address to. And then he actually just tracked everything, like all of it. He could tell you who sold email lists to whom. Um, I probably would be willing to bet money he can still do that. He probably hasn't stopped. He's pretty, pretty neurotic. Um, really smart guy, really, really sharp, really bright. Um, yeah, I mean, there are ways to do it. And it's actually not that. It's not super difficult, right? Um, you can do cookie analysis on your own machines. Uh, you can use private browsing and VPNs. You have to use them in concert, by the way. A, a lot of people miss the fact that most tracking is done by cookies. So VPNs don't help with cookies. <laughs> you have to use private VPNs or VM instances or refresh, um, you know, cookie uh, instances um, with your VPN in order to actually hide yourself. Um, that's good hygiene. If you read any of the white hat hacker stuff or black hat hacker stuff for that matter, they'll talk about 
I forget what they used to call it, but it's basically system hygiene where you're, you're taking care for the cookies and the other indications on your system so that you can't get caught anyway, right? Because just changing your IP address, everybody knows who you are. Uh, that problem was solved by Media Armor and subsequently Google years ago. I worked at Media Armor. Um, they, they figured out how to track people on multiple devices. So they knew if you were on your cell phone or your laptop, that it was still you. Um, and they just did that with cookies. It's not, it's not magic, it's just cookies. And third party, you know, cross cookies and all that nonsense and whatever. Um, the cross reference is really easy. When you think about it, you're like, oh, that's all it is. Yeah, that's pretty much all it is. So you can say anything with location data now. Um, and actually they use a lot of phone location data uh, for Facebook and YouTube and ads on the web. They would do that for a while. So, for example, if you watch, if you try to watch uh, like one of the Boston news stations, which I put on occasionally just to see, you know, what's going on in Boston, it'll give me a local ad for something in South Carolina because they know I'm in South Carolina. It's not, it's, cook, it's a cookie. They, they have IP locator. Um, it's not that hard. So, The algorithms only have so much information available. They have cookie data, they have past tracking data, right? And then they have whatever your whatever URLs. And that's it, it's all they have. So once you know that, you can just track your search results or your uh, interactions in something like LinkedIn and figure out who's selling what data to whom and how long it takes to get there. I do that all the time because it's not that hard. Like, you, 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 look, you probably have to keep track of it better than I do because I have good memory and I can just go, oh, yeah, I know where that came from. Um, but you can keep a spreadsheet and like one spreadsheet and figure it all out. It's not that hard. Now, is this any good? They're constantly changing the algorithms. So, you know, when they make a new link and you don't know about it, you kind of get caught in that web. Um, maybe you don't care. Maybe you do. So one thing that I do is, especially if I'm doing medical research for my friends, because I do quite a bit of that, um, I use a VPN and a, and a private browser. Why? Because I don't want to get ads for, you know, whatever. Like there's all kinds of crazy things that, that I search in the medical realm. Um, and they'll give you ads for them, uh, for the cure, the quote cures from the drug companies uh, once you search for them once. So yeah, and I don't do all my medical searching that way. There's a bunch of stuff I just search for because it's relevant to me. And if they show me an ad, it'll be relevant. I don't care. But it does no one good to get an irrelevant ad. So it's better that I search for medical stuff for my friends in a private browser on a VPN so that I'm not getting those ads. They're not spending that money and wasting it on somebody who's never gonna buy their stuff anyway. Um, then I have ad space for things that are relevant. And you may think like, oh, the ads are the enemy. Ads are how you find anything that you want to buy. So people don't think about it, but actually that's how the world works. Uh, and you can, you know, kind of be like, oh, advertising bad, marketing bad, but it's not actually. And marketing used to all be done by the church. And I actually think that's what broke that everyone's upset about and nobody really understands that. And like, fair enough, I'm thinking about doing a video on that. It's really hard to cover. It's a new theory for me. So, you know, it probably took me months to sort of sort through how to even talk about it. Uh, I floated to a couple of people and they were like, oh, that's interesting. And there's a lot more to it than I just said. But algorithms are necessary because there's too much advertising. And advertising is just telling people about your stuff. And it doesn't have to be things you're selling people, right? It can be your free events that you do at Tai Chi in the park or whatever. That's all subject to advertising and marketing rules. Uh, it's how we communicate and find out about events that we want to cooperate with. So when you view advertising and marketing as modes of cooperation, it's like, oh, well, they're not problems. They're things we have to do. If you have to do it, it's not a problem. It's something you have to do and account for. So When you think about the algorithm, it's a way to connect people, interested parties. So I have something that I'm selling. You're interested in potentially engaging with it. 
the algorithm should do that. Does the algorithm do that perfectly? No, because the algorithm is written by people and people aren't perfect. So bad critique, um, obvious, universal, who cares? How do we cater the algorithm? Well, we watch what it does and we go, oh, when I do this, it does that. Okay, fair enough. You have all the control over the algorithm, all of it. Uh, algorithms work on inputs. You're the inputter. Uh, you can say, oh, Mark, but there are other imp Not really. <laughs> like, there's another side of inputs, and they're trying to do a match. It's basically a matching system. And that's not bad. Um, and if you want to see cool algorithm tech, sign up for the Google AI algorithm upgrade thingy. It's a beta, but my goodness, is it good. Um, I was going to do a slap on top of Google thing. But now I'm like, oh, well, there's no point. They, they've got an AI that actually does a really, really good job. Um, I'm not sure it's good for deep research. I haven't really played with it that much yet, but I did use it a couple of times. I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, it's much more target. It doesn't give you all the junk. When you just pay attention to and observe what's going on around you, the world gets much less scary. Because you can just see the relationships and the patterns that are unfolding. See my other channel navigating patterns, which has had a spurt of new subscribers because Mathieu Peugeot mentioned that uh, he thought my channel was great uh, and gave me the best endorsement anybody could ever get. Um, and I actually might get to monetize that channel in the very near future, the way things are going. Um, but that's why patterns are important. Algorithms are just trying to do patterns, like they're trying to enact patterns in the world. As those patterns get sort of discovered by, quote, the other fraud, right, when the advertisers discover changes made to the algorithm and start this war of changes, which was going on, you know, it's been going on for, you know, 20 years or whatever now. Um, that's just a function of the pattern system working at a higher level. In other words, the materialism, the algorithmism, doesn't work. Like it's not sufficient to hold the world. So there's an escalation to a higher layer of engagement. And if you want to talk meta, uh, which I disagree with, I have a video on that on my other channel, Navigating Patterns, by the way, why I hate the word meta and metaphysics. Um, you can think of it that way, although what that really means is a change in scale, which is another video I'm working on, Navigating Patterns. Uh, after I figure this one out, I'm going to do a scaling video on Navigating Patterns. Um, when you look at the world, the patterns will become clear. If you're not seeing patterns in the world, or you're seeing conspiracy theory patterns in the world, uh, then that's a problem. So you can over pattern or over connect. That's conspiracy theories, paranoia, uh, schizophrenia, etc. It's over connection. Uh, or you can under connect where you just kind of like, oh, it's economics, it's politics. It's those are tiny frames. They can't. Politics is a binary frame, it only needs two, two types of things, two buckets. Two buckets is not enough to understand the world. You're basically talking about black and white, actually. Um, you can't see anything meaningful in black and white. Um, you'll get a good idea of the landscape, uh, but you won't really know what's going on. Like you don't see butterflies. It's pretty flying things. You'll see butterflies. They'll just be like black flappy blobs. Not really exciting. So. If you're using those frames, that's no good. Like there's a richness to the world and, and a level of enchantment that you can engage with. And if there's something in the world that you can't participate with either, don't try to participate with it. It's a false image. Um, or figure out why you can't participate, right? And, and that's where the trick is. The trick is in figuring out either that you shouldn't participate or why you can't participate. It's, it's one of those two things. And maybe there are things that you can't participate in, but other people can, fair enough. Um, or maybe they're not participating in either and they're just LARPing. That's, that happens. Like you wanna play the gender game, you can't really participate with that. It, it degrades pretty quickly. Um, and that's what people are pointing at actually, right? Um, you know, if you wanna, whatever woke-isms you wanna go after, they're all parasitic. You 
can participate in them kind of, but not for very long because they just break down immediately. Um, so don't participate in those things. Um, if, if you see you know, somebody going out and walking every day and enjoying and appreciating the sunlight, you can participate with that. Maybe that's something you should participate with, right? Like maybe that would be good to participate with. That'd be kind of cool. So that's the sort of thing you need to like be mindful of is what you can and cannot participate with. So that, that's, that's what the algorithm connects you with. Like, what is this algorithm connecting you to? It knows something about you. You can kind of figure that out if you pay enough attention. You can just observe. And then, is it connecting me to relevant things? If it's not, that's on you. You need to give it better inputs, right? And maybe the answer is don't play that game. So for years, I had the algorithms so that I had so little data input to the algorithms because it's easy to figure out how much um, that they couldn't work. And so what I got was general random zeitgeist stuff. Uh, I don't have that anymore. I kind of gave up on that. It's it's a lot of work. I was just like, meh. Um, I was using three browsers to control that. And uh, that worked pretty well, actually. Then you got to control what you're using for logins and which Google account you're using and all this. And it's a pain in the tail. So eventually I was just like, yeah, it's boring. Let's open it up, see what the algorithms do. And um, yeah, it's gotten better. So <laughs> not that, you know, I mean, my like my Twitter still. You put happy things on Twitter and you like happy things on Twitter and you get happy things on Twitter. It's not, it's not that hard. Um, Facebook's the same way, right? You, you downvote all the bad stuff and you upvote all the good stuff and no, it works just like um, Pandora. Click thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's really that simple. And when you understand that you're a participant with the algorithm and that it doesn't actually rule you or control things, um, when you either tightly control your participation with it or um, just observe your participation and be careful about it, your life gets better. It's that simple. Like resisting the machine or the man or the stuff that you're embedded in is no good. Look, if you don't want to be online, to be online. It's not that hard, right? As like these people and the, the phone makes me do things. This phone doesn't make me do anything. It, it's off. There's no notifications on my phone because it's 11 o'clock. I told it to shut the notifications off. Problem solved. Um, not that notifications work anyway because Android's completely working but different problem when we stop trying to control things outside of our control like the algorithm we gain control over them that's <laughs> ironically how it works like you're not gonna outsmart the google engineers in some sense if you're doing a targeted thing and you were with a group sure you you, you could find a hole in the algorithm great you're not controlling the whole algorithm and maybe you only want to control one piece of the algorithm. Hey, go, go for it, man. Like, that's fine. Um, I've done that before. It's fun, whatever. Um, but really, if you just figure out it's better to cooperate with the things you can cooperate with, you have a lot more control of the algorithm. So don't worry so much about the algorithm and what the program's doing to your brain. It, it doesn't know you. It doesn't care about you. It's not going to do anything to you because it can't it's not an agent in the world but you are and it responds to your agency so you should use that power that time energy and attention which i talk about on navigating patterns quite a bit uh, to do what you need to do to get the results that are most favorable for you out of the algorithm again post flower pictures on twitter get flower pictures from twitter not that hard really does work that simply um is it perfect no but like, they like join the great line of imperfect things, which so far is everything. Um, the line for perfect things still has zero items in it. M might be a hint. Don't know. So, like, give it a rest. There aren't uh, evil software engineers. In fact, there aren't even competent software engineers uh, sitting at Google trying to control your life. Uh, and 
if there were evil software engineers sitting at Google trying to control your life, they're incompetent. No worries. You're good.